Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, like I was saying before, I kind of like rewind now. <laughs> um, let's pray. Lord, today I ask you in Jesus' name. Lord, today I ask you in Jesus' name. That my mind be open to your word. That my mind be open to your word. To bring me a fresh revelation. To bring me a fresh revelation. To my life. To my life. Today. Today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You see, you guys weren't ready to hear that on Wednesday, right? <laughs> but I'm up here and and I want God to speak. Yes. So that's that's just the reason I do this prayer because I want you. This is a confession that that you're saying. You know, God. You know, open my mind. You know, I want I want to hear for from what you have for me. You know, and this is not my show. This is this is not me. Like I'm not supposed to preach today, but you know, Stacy had to leave, and she had to do something in her work, and God chose me to to bring the word. But um, that's why we need to be ready all the time. I was asking my wife today. I'm like, babe. Stacy's not gonna be there. You're gonna preach. She goes, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna preach. All right. And then she goes and tells me, no, no, I think you should preach. I'm like, all right. But the funny thing about it, I was ready this morning. I, I, I wasn't ready this morning. I, I, I had a good time with the Lord, and and God gave me the message for Sunday. This morning was very, very interesting. I had a very interesting morning with the Lord, and with the devil too. It was crazy, boy. But I ain't gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you on Sunday. But today, today got very interesting in my room. And um, but God gave me a great word. But the word was it's gonna be for Sunday. I, I, Samantha was asking me, are you gonna preach? And I'm like, what Sunday's message? I'm like, no, no, I'm gonna. That's Sunday's message. So I told the Lord, give me another message for today. So basically, I spent the whole day studying. And it's been uh, a good day. It's been a positive day. Amen. So back to the, the reason that I, I, I do this prayer is that God could speak to you. You know, I, I want God to speak to you. I, I don't I don't want to be I just want to be an instrument in his hands. That that's what my heart's desire is. And that's the reason that I was saying this, that it's not me getting prepared or anything. I don't want to be the one that's speaking honestly. I want God to flow through me. You know what I mean? Like like Toby Mac says, you know, God, you steal the show. Because this is not my show. This is his show. Amen? This is not my preaching. I want this to be God's preaching. And I want God to speak to you. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. 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 Did I talk too much or what? No, <laughs> Everybody's like, didn't even say nothing. I was like, whoa. I, I said something that I wasn't supposed to say or something. Okay, so today is what? Transform your thinking? Amen. That's the title of, of the series on Wednesdays. Transform your thinking. So I guess I want to talk about some thinking stuff. <laughs> so we're going to be reading in the book of Romans, chapter 12. That's a real thinking chapter. My favorite. <laughs> What do you think, Gene? That's the thinking chapter, right? <laughs> Omar got that whole chapter highlight. Mate. Hopefully God speaks to you in a different way today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Alright. So let's let's read. Verse 1. Yes. And chapter 12. It says, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service okay this verse here I I'm gonna say some stuff today that that I don't know it's like every time I start talking about this stuff people like like don't like don't like me too much, but I'm, I'm, I like to speak the truth. You understand? Because the truth sets you free. But you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some stuff that I got from my study Bible, and I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let this thing rip. 
Amen. It says, Jesus' followers must possess an intense passion to honor him in every aspect of life. Every aspect of life. Our whole entire life should be to honor God. Amen. Our gratitude to God for his mercy and salvation. Because we do not deserve what we have received. Amen. 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 Do you deserve what you have received? No, you haven't. Which, you, which should be completely devoted to loving him by his standard and every, in serving his purpose for our lives. So let me repeat that all together. Jesus' followers must purposefully and intense passion to honor him in every aspect of life. Our gratitude to God for his mercy and salvation, which should be completely devoted to loving him, living by his standards and serving his purpose for our lives. Living sacrifice. I'm going to give three things that we should live by. Number one. Our goal should be to demonstrate God's holiness, moral purity, spiritual wholeness, separation from evil, and complete dedication to God in all that we do. Repeat it, right? <laughs> it's like, like what? Number one, our goal should be to demonstrate God's holiness, moral purity, spiritual wholeness, separation from evil, and complete dedication to God in all we do. Now this requires personal sacrifice. Are you guys understanding me? Our goal is to demonstrate God's holiness Moral purity, spiritual wholeness, separation from evil, and complete dedication to God in everything that we do, in all that we do. But this requires personal sacrifice. Our separation from the patterns and the things of this world so that we can pursue a deeper relationship with God. Although in the light of what God has done for us, it should not be such a huge sacrifice. So, this requires a personal sacrifice. What is it? To separate from what? The patterns of this world. Man, I've been talking about this for a while now. But I guess God wants me to keep talking about the same thing. Because if we want to live lives sacrificial to God, we need to separate from the patterns of this world. So that we can pursue a deeper relationship with God. Although in the light of what God has done for us, it should not be seen as a huge sacrifice. Do you guys understand that, right? It really is not that big of a sacrifice for us to be separated from the things of this world compared to his sacrifice for us. Yeah. Right? You guys are understanding me, right? Yes, of course. It, it's, it shouldn't be that big of a sacrifice. But let me tell you, it seems like a big sacrifice because the world is like squeezing us. Right, Gene? Number two, we must offer our bodies to God as dead to sin and alive to God. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. We must offer our bodies to God as dead to sin and alive to God. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 6. Ooh, that 
that new King James, well, I've been like just all in that new King James. I don't want to have nothing to do with NIV. NIV has, has des I've deserted it. Too many mistakes in it. It's got missing things. Yeah, too many missing things. It says, likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we need to be dead to sin, but alive in God, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. So if we go to chapter 8, verse 10, it says, And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. Boy, that is powerful right there. There's, there's no explanation there. It's like ex Explanatory, that's how we you say that, right? Self-explanatory. It's like, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. The spirit, it says, the, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of whom raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells inside of you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For it is, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will leave. You will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. How many sons and daughters of God do we have in the house? Amen. But we need to be what? Dead to what? Sin. Is it a great sacrifice? Compared to what he did for us? It doesn't seem that big of a sacrifice. Because he helped us walk. Hallelujah. You're trying to get ahead of me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Oh, I did this. We're on three. No, we're going to stay on two for a little bit. And it says, let me go back. It says, we must offer our bodies to God as dead to sin and alive to God. And as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If the temple, of the, if we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Sin cannot live inside of us. Am I talking the truth or not? Yes. yes. Huh? Yes? Yes. Amen. I have some amens here. Amen? Do I have amens in the house? So be it. Hallelujah. And it is written. And it shall be done. <laughs> First Corinthians 6. Yeah, no, I'm, because I didn't, I want, I didn't have time to to put the scriptures down, so I'm reading them from up here today. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of harlots? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, set, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee from sexual morality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual morality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the what? The who is in what? In you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God with your body and in and your spirit, which are God's. Amen? Amen. Are you guys understanding me today? Yes, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? What is it? He bought for you were bought at a price. 
What price is that? Who, who knows what price is that? What price will you buy? Blood the blood. By his blood and his beating and his sacrifice, we were bought with a price. So, so that price, is it, is it too much for you to sacrifice a little bit? It's not. But it's easy for you to say no right now. But when you're face to face with that temptation or that sin or that worldliness or whatever is coming your way, it's not that easy to say, well, you know. But all you have to do is think about what he did for you. What did he do for you? He gave his life for you. He paid it with a price. And that price is his blood. So why would I not do everything in my power to honor God with everything that I have? Why is that? It says that we need to be living sacrifices, right? We are living sacrifices because I'm not dead. And I'm more alive now than ever. Because you know why? Because I'm in Christ Jesus. That's not there, Gene. <laughs> you know I'm talking from the Holy Ghost now. I'm more alive now than ever. Because I have life in Christ Jesus. That's why I should not live in the flesh. Because when I live in the flesh and I live in sin... Like, like it was talking about in this verse, if you go back a little bit. Go back a little bit more. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? So if we're, he, we're, he's talking about if you're joined to something that's not right, you become one with that thing that you're joined with. And, and I, he's not talking about, oh, a harlot, a whore, or whatever. He's talking about a lot of things that we could be joined with. Amen? Who, am I right or am I not right? right, yes, you're right. Because the two shall be one. Become one flesh. So if you join with something that's not right, and this is also talking about people that are, that are having sexual activities out of marriage, too. Because a lot of people are doing their own thing and, well, I'm, I'm going to test out the car before I drive it. You know, before I get married. That, that, that doesn't work like that. Gene is laughing. <laughs> because that's what people say, right? Oh, you got you to test out the car. What do you mean you got to test out the car? If that's a car that God gave you, if that's a woman God gave you, marry her. You don't need to test nothing out. Because God doesn't make mistakes. But when you join with something, you will become one flesh. Amen? Okay, number three. You guys ready? No. Yes. I'm almost finished. <laughs> three. We must realize that true godly worship is not simply being active in a church service. It involves much more than singing or even speaking words of praise to God. Authentic Christian worship involves a lifestyle that brings honor to God and words of action. I threw a lot of stuff out there, right? Just, just try to bring it into one. It is not a greater sacrifice to, ver to voice our worship to God in a church service where people are gathering for that very purpose. Worship becomes a true sacrifice when we take it outside of the church by living in a way that truly honors, exalts, and brings positive attention to God. So basically, it's not, we come over here and we worship God, right? But that's, that's a good thing. We lift our hands and we worship and we praise Him for His goodness, His kindness, and love. But what are you doing outside of these walls? You could just write that down. 
What are you doing outside of the walls? Are you praising him? Are you lifting up your hands when you're watching something that you're not supposed to be watching? When you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing? It's easy to come over here inside of the church and worship him. But what about when you're outside? That is true sacrifice. When you go outside of the church by living in a way that truly honors God. That's when you honor God. When you're out there and you're doing what, when nobody's seeing you. But let me tell you, God sees everything. But when you're out there and nobody's seeing what you're doing, that's when you're honoring God. When you truly do stuff to honor Him. Amen? Amen. It's not about in the church. Everybody, you know, lifts up their hands. Everybody worships. Amen? It's, and I'm not saying that's not God. Oh, don't come to church to worship. No, come to church to worship. We're supposed to worship together. But it's, what are you doing when you're outside? That's what, that's what true sacrifice is. It's not a sacrifice to be in here worshiping the Lord. Are you guys, you understand the whole point of this, this, this point, right? That's not a sacrifice. Everybody's worshiping. Well, for some people it's a sacrifice. Because they don't want to get out of their seats. Sometimes I don't feel like getting out of my seat. But I'm not, I'm not throwing anything at anybody. But the, my point is that what are you doing outside? Outside of the church. Hallelujah. And this is what a living sacrifice is all about. When you do what God has called you to do outside of the church. When you honor him with your members, when you honor him with your words, when you honor him with your sacrifice, you honor him with your, with your praise, you honor him with your money. That is what a living sacrifice is all about. It's not about what you do here in church. It's not about what people see you do. It's about what you do behind closed doors. What are you doing for the Lord? Then we go on to verse 2 in Romans 12. It says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. This is a real, very real thing here. Hmm? There is a real pressure to conform to the patterns of this world. And to be squeezed into the mold on many different levels. Christ followers must firmly resist the tendency to imitate and to adopt world and godly way of thinking and behavior. Boy, you want me to repeat that? That is something that we need to follow. There is a very real pressure to conform to the patterns of this world and be squeezed into its mold on many different levels. Listen, listen to what this is saying. Because there's different levels that we could conform to the world. I didn't, I didn't pick that up to right now. This is what my Bible study says. Because there's different levels that we could conform. Like, you know, oh, this is not that bad. Oh, but this is, this is all right. I'm not going to do that because that's like straight up wrong. Are you, you, you're understanding what I'm saying. You, you're understanding what the Holy Spirit is telling me right now. There's different levels of conformity. Because, some, well, that's not that bad. We could bring that. And then it says, then it says different level. Christ followers, followers must firmly resist the tendency to what? Imitate and adopt world and godly way of thinking and behaviors. I'm sorry to say that again, but this looks like the church today. 
but they don't take it to I <laughs> I never I never looked at this with that level thing but the Holy Spirit showed me that right now you see I want to say something, but I really don't want to offend nobody. But there should be no levels. Amen. There should be no levels that we need to conform to worldly things. The church does not need to bring no worldly stuff inside of the church. There needs to be no level of compromise to the world in the church. Amen. The reason we must resist from conforming to the present world system is because why? It's evil. Everything that the world has, it's evil. Acts 2.40 says, oh, this one I put here. Listen to this. My, my Bible says, like, for like a title, it says, Vital for Church Growth. Like, you know, like a little title, it'll say. It. And it says, with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved. From this perverse generation. We live in a generation that is perverse. And the Bible tells me here in Romans 12. We cannot conform to this world. We cannot bring the world into the church. We cannot bring the world into our lives. Because God says no. We need to be out of this perverse generation. Because you know who's under this rule? Satan. Because it is hostile to God and his people. And it is built on human wisdom and values and on unbiblical views. That is what this present world is built on. It seems like I preach the same message every time, right? I guess you know what happens? That I'm jealous for God's church. I am. I am because I believe we need not to bring the world into the church Amen. and I'm going to take it a little bit further we need not to bring the world into our lives Amen. we need not to bring the world into our homes and I can finish with that right there you want to live godly and holy lives don't bring the world into your home don't because you know, there's a lot of church that are singing hallelujah and praise the Lord. But what are they doing when they get home? Like I was saying before. What's your attitude when you get home? We're living in a perverse generation. With wisdom, human wisdom and values that are not, that are unbiblical. That's the world that we live in today. James 4.4 4 says, Adulterers and adulteress, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself a what? Say it. Enemy of God. Is that clear or what? Is that clear? Yes. So what am I going to do? 
Hallelujah. Let me tell you, I want to preach Sunday's message today because I'm like fired up. I want to tell you what the enemy told me today. But I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay on point. I'm going to behave. I'm going to behave. I'm going to behave. I'm going to behave today. Thank you, Stacy. Stacy's here and thank you for letting me, giving me your Wednesday today. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Adulterer and adulteress, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend with the world makes himself an enemy of God. Christ's kingdom is not of this world. Christ's kingdom is not of this world. Christians, if you call yourself a Christian and you proclaim to know Christ and you proclaim to be washed by the blood... You should, not, you should not be a worldly person and not be dabbing into worldly activities. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Christ's followers are called to be a light in the midst of darkness. Amen. Amen. Christ's followers are called to be a light in the midst of darkness. Which means that their lives should be noticeable, different from every person that lives in the world patterns. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Ah, hallelujah. You guys know what Matthew 5 says, right? 14. Jesus says... You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We need to be the light of the world. But if darkness is living inside of us, we are taking God's light out of our lives. We need to light this world with... Man, I want to I jump back into the tabernacle prayer because this is key. The tabernacle prayer is key to this. This verse fits right in with the tabernacle prayer because we need to bring... The fire from the altar of sacrifice. To light that fire. We need to be forgiven. We need to ask the Lord to forgive us. So we can go out there and shine. Amen. A lot of people say, yeah, well, God died already. He forgave me already. Yeah, but why do you keep doing the same thing that you've been doing then? Ask yourself a question. Is God happy with your sin? Since he died for you and grace is sufficient. And if you say, yeah, I don't know. Then you must not have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Because the Holy Spirit tells me when I'm doing something wrong. He says, yo, you're doing something wrong. And when I do something wrong, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to go and ask for forgiveness. Because that's, what, that's what's inside my heart. You know, like I said a long time, I step on you, I'm not going to say, oh, don't worry about it. I stepped on you before. Right? I'm going to say, look, I'm sorry. Even though I stepped on you one time before, I, I apologize. And that's what sacrifice is. You come to the altar of sacrifice to ask the Lord for forgiveness. Because then you bring that fire to that lampstand. And when you light that lampstand, that's when you're in this holy place. Let me tell you, we need to get cleaned up, church. We, we, we need to get away from the world. The Lord, the Lord has been like pushing me for this, this one thing. Like, man, you need to come out from, from among them. Because I want to do something mighty in, our, in your life. I want to do a mighty work in your life. But, but when you're mixed with the world, you cannot live, you cannot live in two worlds. You can't, you can't live righteous and you can't live half dirty and half righteous. It doesn't work like that. 
God wants to, us to be complete. And that's why God keeps bringing these same messages to me. I didn't have a message today. I had a, this message. I brought it at 3.30. And what did God tell me? The same thing that he's been telling me for the past four weeks. Get away. Step away. I don't know if he's just talking to me. But he might be talking to you too. Is he only talking to me? No. Oh. I was thinking, I was like, man, maybe he's only talking to me. Get away from the things that are not godly. This is key. This is what we need to do. You want to know? This includes resisting the temptation to conform to many forms of worldliness common in society, including greed, selfishness, humanistic thinking, a desire for power, envy, hate, revenge, filth, filthy language, sexual lust, and impurity, ungodly entertainment. Listen to the list. There might be some stuff in there that, that's going to jump at you. Let me. Get, you want me to say it over again? Yes. Okay. This includes greed, selfishness, humanistic thinking, a desire for power, envy. Oh, I want that. I, I, I got power. Envy, hate, revenge, filth, filthy language, sexual lust and impurity, ungodly entertainment, fashionable clothes that are immodest and seductive, substance abuse, relationships that do not honor God, and other things that defile the standards of God's word. And I could keep adding on to that list. Let me touch this one a little bit because I know when I touch this little part right here, people don't like that. People start getting offline and everything when I start talking about stuff like this. But this is the truth. We need to get away from this stuff. We need to, you know what happens? We need to expose it. And people don't like when they get exposed, right? You don't like to be exposed. People don't like to be exposed. But we need to expose things. We need to show and say the truth. We need to preach the truth. I'm not, I'm not preaching no gingerbread messages here in this church. I'm preaching the truth. And the Bible tells me in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 it says for you were once in darkness but now you are light in the Lord hallelujah for you were once in darkness but you are now light in the Lord walk as children of light um, I think it's saying that we need to walk as children of light for the fruit of the Spirit is in all godliness, righteousness, and truth. Truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, have no, have some fellowship with unfruitful works, right? Have no. no. <laughs> you know why I threw that some, right? Because we do some. But the Bible tells me, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But what? Expose them. Oh, expose them. Expose them. Expose them. Boy, that King James and that Beatles don't say it like that, boy, I'll tell you what. Expose it. nothing to do with no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. We do not need to put our hands on nothing that is not from God. Let me tell you, church, oh, Ramashaya, we need to live righteous lives. We need to be 
living sacrifices alive. We need to be that light of the world. We need to be shining, bro. How is God going to put us up there if we're half dark and half light? There's no shadow needs to be upon me. I need to be straight up light for the Lord. Amen. But how do I do this? I need to have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But I'd rather just expose it. And that's what I bring to this church. I'm exposing it. Because if I don't expose it, then everybody just hides it and keeps it in. It's time to say, look, I don't want this anymore in my life. I don't want to be this way anymore. I want to live in the light. I want to be the light. I want to live like Jesus. I want to have the mind of Christ. I want Christ to live in me. I want every pore of my body to say, Christ, Christ, Christ. I am Christ. I'm a Christian. How am I going to say if I'm a Christian and I'm doing stuff that's not right? How? How could I call myself a Christian and I'm not doing stuff that's right? We cannot live in two worlds, church. It's not possible. It says you cannot serve two masters. Either you love one or hate the other. We cannot bring the world into our house. God is dealing with some things here. Hallelujah. If we are the light, our lives should be different from most people in the world. This includes resisting temptation to conform to any form of worldliness, commitment, commitments to society, including greed, selfishness, humanistic thinking, a desire for power, envy, hate, revenge, filth language, sexual lust, and impurity. Woo, hallelujah. Hate, revenge, filthy language, sexual lust, impurity, ungodly entertainment, fashionable clothes that are immodest and seductive, substance abuse, imagínate, relationships that do not honor God, and other such things that defy the standards of God, and I can keep going on and on and on forever. Instead of conforming to the world value and its lifestyles, our God, our minds must continually be renewed and transformed to God's way of thinking. Constantly, we need to be renewing our minds, saying, I need to get that out of my life. I cannot live that way. I have the mind of Christ. Christ died for me. It is a small sacrifice that I have to make compared to the sacrifice he made on the cross for me. That is tiny. And why do we still struggle with the same thing over and over and over again? The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. Right? What does it say that at? You got that there. For he, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But what? We have the mind of Christ. Jesus. Haramashiach. I'm almost done. Philippians 2.5 It says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind was in him? You know how this happens? You know how we, like today has been a productive day to me, for me, you know why? Because I've been in the Word all day. 
the whole day I've been pretty much in the world. I went to to Masitas and ate and and got some stuff from Home Depot. But when I got back home, I went back into the work from the morning. And today I bring you a message that is like, <sighs> you know what? Because right now I have the mind of Christ because my mind is in the word. Amen. And when your mind is in the word, let me tell you, man, I want, I want to do something crazy here today. But I'm not going to do it. I want to scream, dance, and shout, and cry at the same time. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that today. You see, we need to spend time in God's word. And meditate on God's word. How are we going to get the mind of Christ? In the word. Who's the word? Christ. Huh? Christ. What did we talk about in 42 yesterday? Huh? Who's the word? Christ. How do we get the mind of Christ? The word. The Bible says, in the book of John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word was in the beginning, and the Word was with God. Jesus is the Word. He was in the beginning with the Word. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and life was the light of man. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. You see, Jesus, man, that scripture right there just brings this whole message around. Right? Think about it. If Jesus is the Word, and we're in the Word, we have the mind of Christ. Right? Right or wrong? And if we have the mind of Christ... It says, in him was life. Life. I'm alive. You know why I'm alive? You guys want to know why I'm alive? Because I have Christ. And I'm not saying it like, yeah, literally, literally is probably true. Because I probably would be dead if I didn't know Jesus. But we're alive when Christ comes inside of us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this for you guys too. You understand what I'm saying? It says, in him was life, and the life was the light. Listen to this. This is awesome. I, I got this from my study Bible. It says, in him was life, and life was in the light. Life is one of the key themes of, in John. The term appears 36 times. Jesus is described as the bread of life, the water of life, the word of are the words of eternal life. He is the giver of life. And then it says, and the life was the light of man. Light, not life, light is mentioned 23 times in the book of John. Life was the light for everyone, which means that he revealed God's plan to us and showed us the way back to God. So it is through Christ Jesus that we become that light and it is through his word that we have the mind of Christ and through him we have life and that life that he has given us that he also listen to what I'm saying because since that life brings light when we have life we need to bring light too Amen. to the world right I'm just throwing stuff out of my head, right? We need to do some sacrifice in church. Living sacrifice is not that big of a deal compared to what he did for us. If God has been telling you, look, I don't want you hanging around with that person anymore because that person is a bad influence in your life. Is that a big sacrifice for you? 
Is it bigger than the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross? What about if God... Now put yourself in the picture where God has been telling you, I don't want you to do that. Because we're disobedient children. But I say today, I'm, I'm a child of the light. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know why? Because I'm in the light. Because Jesus is the light. And he's, he's the light. I'm the light. I feel like singing that old song from Audio Drug. <laughs> it's Audio Drug, all right? No, it's uh, the DC Talk. Oh, DC Talk. Right. Well, Toby Mac is back. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to be in the light. You know what I'm talking about? In the light. I'll shine like the stars. In the heavens. Oh, Lord, be my light. And be my salvation. So I want it to be in the light. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's all I want to be. I, I don't I don't want to be in the light. I want to be the light. Amen. I hope Toby Mac is not listening to this. <laughs> He's going to change it up. Now I got a new song. I want to be the light. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So let me finish with this last part here. Thank you, Jesus. We need to become children of the light, church. Yes. Amen? I'm the, I'm the child of the light. I know that. You know why? Because I Jesus is the light. Christ. Hallelujah. And in him was life, and the life was Woo! the light of man. In him was life, and the life was light of man. In him was life, and life was the light of man. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That means the darkness could not cover the light. Hallelujah. All right, so I'm going to finish with this one last thing. That's what I said, right? What you said, the light exposes mm -hmm. the darkness. The darkness. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to Romans 12, 2 again. And it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? What is it? <laughs> Everybody's looking at me like, I don't know. <laughs> what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? What is it? You're waiting for me to say it, right? Huh? It's easy. Let's go right back. It's having a spiritual renewed mind. What, what, let's go from verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptab acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We cannot conform to this world. How do we do the perfect and acceptable will of God? By renewing, hmm? By renewing our minds. I cannot think like yesterday. I cannot think, Gene, I cannot think like yesterday anymore. Like the stuff that we talked about yesterday, I can't think about that anymore. It needs to be new. Today was a new day. Tomorrow needs to be a new day. I, didn't, I can't talk about what I did yesterday anymore because my mind needs to be renewed. And that's how I'm going to keep winning the battle, winning the fight. I need to keep renewing my mind. I need to be, keep being transformed. Amen? I need to transform my life. 
I need to keep growing in my relationship with Christ. I need to get away from the world and get closer to the Lord. Start getting into his word and stop looking at stuff that is not even is not even um beneficial for us. At least look at the National Geographic channel. You might get something out of it. <laughs> you don't even know about that, right? But you understand what I'm saying? You guys understand. There's so much junk out there. But the closer we get to God, the further away we're going to get from everything that does not want us to be the light of this world. Amen? Amen. So I finish with that. Now if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube and you want this relationship with the Lord, I'm not going to close the service without doing a prayer, without asking if, if you're tired of the way that you're living, the, the way that your life is going, the way things are, are not going the way, and you want God to put you on a right journey and on a right track in your life, I'm going to ask you if you want to do a prayer with me so God could place you on the right journey in your life. Amen? This is for those that are on Facebook and YouTube because I believe we all need to have a chance. And, and God has given me a second chance and he wants to give everyone a second chance. And God cannot change your past, but he could change your future. Amen? Amen. And today could be your day. And maybe you have backslidden from the things of the Lord. Maybe you have known Christ in the past and in the past couple of years you have been, you know, living in two worlds. But you say today, look, I, I want to change my life. I want to turn things around. I, I want to start living for Christ. I don't want to live in the world anymore. I want to live for Jesus Christ. So if, if I'm talking to you today, I want you to repeat a prayer after me and say, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. I believe that you died and rose from the grave. Transform my life. And place your spirit in me. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I thought about this yesterday, but when we're recording, the phone fell off and we didn't finish recording. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if you don't have a church and you're watching on YouTube, we would love for you to come and visit us. And if you want to become part of this body, you're more than welcome. And let me give you the address. If you're on Facebook, on my page, you could click House of God and Gate to Heaven. It'll give you the address. But on YouTube, there's no way to get in the address. So I will give you the address. The address is 10701 Southwest, 216th Street. And that is Bay 14. And that's in Miami, Florida. And the zip code is 33170. And thank you for watching. And thank you guys for coming. And I hope that you guys receive something Woo! positive today from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who's excited? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You are dismissed.